so happy you're watching today with Marilyn and Sarah, and God has some really, really great things for you today. Have you ever struggled in any kind of relationships where it just feels like it's awkward and how do you have some conversations and it's difficult because you want to avoid certain subjects and sometimes we have those struggles like around holiday times with our families. You know, you think about Thanksgiving or Christmas because oh, you think, oh no, I got to see him again and you know, we can't talk about that, can't talk about it. You know, we all have struggles in some of our relationships. So. If this is an area where you need some prayer, hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you to help you in your relationships and in your communication with your relationships. And mom, we have one of our favorite guests, oh, yes, Deborah Pagay with us. Yay! Deborah, so, so glad, glad to you're be here. here. So glad you're here. And Deborah, you have this amazing book. I love this book called Confronting Without Offending. Confronting, because here's the thing. We just don't do it. We don't do it. Mm -mm. We're scared. Right. <laughs> We're right, scared. and we use that whole Bible thing. Jesus says, turn the other cheek. I'm just going to turn the other cheek. And so we, we kind of justify it. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm not, it's, it, it's not biblical to confront. So what do you do when Jesus says, turn the other cheek? Well, when Jesus said to turn the other cheek, he was talking about retaliation. I'm on this soapbox, this campaign to get people to confront. Confrontation is godly. Retaliation is not godly. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus talked about turning the other cheek, he wants us to be so committed to not avenging our own wrongs until we're willing to let a person hit us again. We'll just turn the other cheek. But he commanded us to confront. And so I want to, before we begin the discussion, I want to talk about what confrontation means because it's one of those words that has gotten a bad rap, like the word diet. You think it means <laughs> like starving. It just means any plan of eating. Well, confrontation, the prefix con means with, fron means face. Confrontation is the act of coming together face to face. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. And we're commanded to do it. I say it's in the red letters in the Bible. Jesus said it in Matthew 18, 15. If thy brother trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault. Not go and tell somebody else. Go and tell him his fault between him and thee alone. That's what it says. Go and tell him his fault. So Jesus commanded it. So even so, if we are the offender or the offended, we have the obligation to start the reconciliation process. We have the obligation to initiate the confrontation, the act of coming together face to face. In Matthew 5, 23, he says, listen, even if you're at the altar, don't even bring in your offering to the altar. Stop, wait, go, and you remember that somebody has something against you. You hear that? You don't have anything against them. They have something against you. Mm -hmm. He said, leave, your, leave the money there. Go and be reconciled, then come back and offer the sacrifice. That's how important it was to Jesus. I could go on and on with the scriptures because it's very powerful, very uh, telling. Uh, it's documented that Jesus wants us to confront. Last one, Luke 17, 3. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. <gasps> that means tell him to stop. Rebuke mm -hmm. him, tell him to stop. If thy brother trespasses, if they cross your boundaries, tell him to stop. So it's godly. Because you know what? We need confrontation because it causes us to come together. And most people don't like to do it because we don't know what the outcome is going to be. But listen, if we do it God's way, it's going to cause the relationship to grow stronger. I believe that one of the reasons my husband and I have been happily married for over 35 years now is that we are both effective confronters. We'll tell each other in a minute, I don't like it when you did so and so. And so, I, and I will get into how to do that. How do you say it so that it's non-threatening? How do you tell somebody your behavior is having a negative impact upon me? And I need it to stop. That's what wow. we're going to do. Wow. I love that because I like the fact that reconciliation is the purpose. That's it. And reconciling. Imagine, you know, the Hatfields and the McCoys and all that. <sighs> yes. Those long-term bitter raging that goes on and tribal and national. Yes. This is really the Countries. key to it. We have, oh. we have older people. I know a person who was about 80 and she said, my sister never liked me. She used to braid my hair too tightly. I'm like, when you, you are Jesus, yeah, come on. <laughs> yeah. You know, but you never said anything or whatever. So we're going to teach you how to say something without, you know, without, in a, in a, in a God honoring way. You don't have to be hostile. You don't wait until it builds up because we go from one extreme to the other. Right. We either be quiet for peace sake and suffer in silence right. or we just blow up, you know. See, you need the book. <laughs> there isn't anyone <laughs> watching this program who doesn't need this book. I need this book. You need this book because we're all dealing with people. <laughs> you know, I said one time to the Lord, you know, I wouldn't have any problems if I didn't know people. <laughs> but 
this is wonderful. It shows us how reconciliation can come, how we can cleanse ourselves in a sense. I love this. So I encourage you to call in. And if you're having a big problem with somebody right now, we're not going to counsel you, but call in for prayer. I feel that's very important. And you know, it's that whole passive aggressive. Yes. That's where that, you know, we don't do anything and then we have an explosion. We do. And hit we, the, do. we hit the fan. Well, and you know, and I, I, I used to interview anybody I would see in a wheelchair that maybe had had a stroke. And so it, I got some interesting insight because I, I, more than one person told me, I used to just keep quiet and send everything underground. And so in so doing, you know, eventually it just, it was too much and, the, and, and you have a stroke. Now, does that make any sense? You know, when you could just tell somebody no or that I don't want to do that or I'm offended by that. You know, really, you can do that without being angry. That's the thing. Because we, we, we think we have to go from one extreme to the other. So this is what the Lord told me. He said, resentment is unresolved anger that has been resent to the inside. Hmm. You're angry mm -hmm. and you don't say anything about it. You resend it. Mm -hmm. and, you de and the Bible says, beware lest that root of bitterness. Well, let me tell you this. Anything you put on the table, there won't be a root. Because things, only things that are underneath the surface grow roots. So I say you won't develop a root of bitterness if you learn how to keep the issues on the table. Don't send them underground. Don't bury them. Just keep them on the table. And you can do it. See, it's, it's, you said this earlier because we deal with people. None of us are carbon copies. There's opportunity <laughs> for us to conflict. because, And I always say conflict is a tool of growth. So let me look for the growth in it. Because if we don't learn to communicate, we can't build anything. And this is most demonstrated when they were doing the Tower of Babel, when they were building that. And, and God went down and confused the language. And then they couldn't communicate. They had to stop building. The Bible says, and they left off building the city. You know why they stopped building? They didn't run out of supplies. They didn't run out of workers. They couldn't communicate. And if you can't communicate, you can't build anything. You can't build a marriage. You can't build a ministry. You can't build anything if you can't communicate. Say that again, because I think that's one of the best things I've ever heard in my life. Say it again to your camera. If you don't communicate, you can't build. The Tower of Babel had to stop, and it was for an evil purpose, because God said this thing they begun to do, because they were in such one accord, they all spoke the same language. God had to confuse the language for them to stop. Because if you don't communicate, you can't build. You can't build your marriage. You can't build your church. You can't build a ministry. You can't build a business if you don't communicate. And that means the message that I send is the message that you receive. And it's done in a way that's God honoring it, non-offensive, and it gets the point across. Wow. Really powerful. Wow. <laughs> I love it. And the truth of it, I mean, that in my mind is chapter one, the goal to confrontation. And of course, you need to pick up this book, Confronting Without Offending, because all of us, I don't care how good you think you are at confronting or how awful you think you are, all of us need to learn how to confront mm -hmm. better and better and better. So hop on the phone, get on the website. And the truth of it is, if you think about your life, and I, I'm thinking right now, I'm like, oh, yeah, I had a situation here where that was a little bit scratchy. And if I'm not careful, it's resentment. Uh, I had a situation here where that's a little scratchy. We need to talk through this and, and really thinking of it in a positive way. But you know, Mom, when I was growing up, Dad, sometimes he had some struggles with some of his communication because he right. would he, he would angry. spike. Ah, angry. Yeah. One extreme to the other. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. and he would just go through the roof and he would go through the roof on little things. Right. You know, I mean, he was right. big on antique furniture. So if you put a <laughs> cup, you know, a glass on the wood, he, I mean, you might as well just the second coming was just around the corner because <laughs> yeah. you're going to leave a ring. Out. I mean, and to this day, I still have this like, woo. You know, like well, it would be interesting to know what his father was like because we learn this stuff. We, we learn how to communicate by what we see. And so that may have been the norm that he grew up with. Because be. my father was like that, and most of my brothers are pretty um, emotional. <laughs> <laughs> okay, angry. <laughs> you know, funny. they tend to, to respond in a, sure. you know. But, but because I watched that and didn't want it for my life, I always try to stay calm, no matter what. Because I always feel that the most calm person is the one who's in control. Because when you get angry, it's like a seesaw in your brain. The, the, the emotions are high, the rationale is low. You see? Oh, yeah, that's really see? it. The so, emotions are yeah, high, the Yeah, when the emotions are high, your ability to think is low. So I want to be the person who has access to my brain and my being rational. I want to be that oh, person. Yeah. Oh, I want to be that goodness. person. That yeah. so and good. all in the book, Confronting yeah. Without Offending, 
This would be great for a small group. Oh, absolutely. Oh, they use it in goodness. colleges. It has been the textbook for much college study. Well, yeah. Because you know what it is? It's a primer on your understanding your own confrontation style, understanding how to confront people based on their personality, temperament, understanding the step to an effective confrontation. Wow. So yeah. you got to get these. You got to go through your Bible study group, your small group. Get a whole bunch of them because it's really, really, really helpful. Helpful to communicate in ways that are constructive and not necessarily combative. Yes. And in just a minute, we're going to come back here, but I want to ask you as far as the goal. What are yes. we trying to achieve? The goal is unity to, because you need want somebody to you. So for instance, let's say you just want your husband to open the, do the door when you go out. You know, you can just sit there and live in Shuresville and say, oh, he should know better. Listen, get out of there. Don't move yeah. from Shuresville where people should know things to do and just say, you know what, if he doesn't have a clue, I'm going to tell him. Sweetheart, I'd really like it if you would open the door for me. So you either want somebody to stop some negative behavior or to start some, some positive behavior. So that's the goal. And that's the, the, the number one thing you got to do before you confront somebody. Think about what do I want to achieve? What is the purpose of this confrontation? Mm -hmm. Coming together face to face. What do I want to happen at the end of the day? Right. And that's really good because it's constructive. Oh, absolutely. And you look at Jesus, that, coming back just a little bit with Jesus. I mean, he confronted all oh, over the place. He yes. confronted religious leaders. He confronted he political leaders. He confronted. And look in the way he did that. Some of it was like through the roof. But some yes. of it was extremely just down to earth, real basic, step by step, right. real settled, real calm. God was the first confronter when he confronted Adam and Eve in the garden. I like it. <laughs> right. Right. I like he it. Asked, I like he asked it. them four oh, questions. I, I won't tell them all. Yeah. Um, but, but all of which he knew the answers. A Adam, where are you? Mm -hmm. Okay, God, you know where he is. You're God. <laughs> sure. But he had set the boundaries and then they violated them. Then he had to confront them and give them the consequences. Yeah, no, that's true. And you know, we're going to come back here in just a little minute. But one of the things we're going to talk about is the different conflict management styles. Because we all have a style of confrontation. So watch this because we're going to come back and talk about it. Have you ever needed to confront someone or a situation and didn't know how? Are you lacking the tools to properly deal with difficult situations in your life? The Bible clearly states that we should confront others when we have conflict or misunderstandings. Life is too short to live in offense. For your gift of $29, we'll send you Deborah P. Gay's book, Confronting Without Offending. This life-changing book offers you practical steps to mend broken relationships and will help you grow on a personal level. You will be challenged and become a better you as you discover the proper words to use when confronting others and when and how to confront, how personality types play into confrontation, how to restore harmony into every relationship at home and at work. We'll also send you Marilyn and Sarah's Speak the Word booklet and Joy in Relationship Scripture card. These powerful resources will help you on your journey to releasing offenses and forgiving others. You will live a more fulfilling life and no longer be bound by negative emotions. Take advantage of these life-changing resources. Call or click today. This is so wonderful that we could confront without offending, without wiping out ourselves and the other person. And who doesn't have lots of time and opportunities for confronting? But again, we can just close our brain. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to back off from it. I'm going to say it's not there at all. But Jesus gives us such beautiful ways that we can reconcile and bring unity. So I'm very delighted to offer this book, Sarah and I are to offer this book to you. Call in, get it. And of course, if you need special prayer on some things, leave your prayer request. We don't counsel you, 
but we'd love to pray over these needs that you have in your relationship. Now, in this part of our program, you're going to give us some basic ways to confront? Well, in this part of the program, we're going to talk about um, conflict management styles a little bit. That okay. We all have a style because right. we all have conflict with people because, you know, the scripture talks about where two or more gather together, Jesus in the midst. Well, listen, I say where two or more gather together, there's going to be conflict because <laughs> sure. we're not all carbon copies of each other. Sure. So right. we have to step back and say, what is my style? And we don't cover all four of them, but there are four that I talk about in the book. Mm -hmm. And the first one is, I say, the accommodator. The accommodator says, just have it your way, I just don't want to be in conflict. And we mm -hmm. find this when Aaron made the golden calf. Remember that? Moses had been gone for forever right. and, they, and, he, and they came to him and they said, Moses isn't coming back. We want a God. You never hear him protest. He says, give me your jewelry. It's interesting when Moses came back and confronted him, Aaron, what have you done? He says, Moses, you know these people. In other words, I, I caved into him because I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be the bad guy, so I made them a calf. Look at the results. Over 3,000 people died. We can't be an accommodator. We can't say, I'm just, just, just be in relationship with me. I, I'll just go along with you. Can't do that. And then, of course, there's the person who abdicates. I call it the abdicator. Ab means to, to uh, away from, and dicta means to say. The abdicator runs away. They don't say what's wrong. It's like the prodigal son's brother. Remember when the prodigal mm -hmm. came home and they're having a party and he's outside pouting? Mm -hmm. He said, you never gave me a party. You know, he, he runs away. These are the people who quit the choir. They don't tell you why. They just left because they were offended that you gave their song to the person who could sing it better. Right? <laughs> sure. Right. They, they just don't say. They, they pout. That's no way to communicate. I, I, I like to tell wives, don't pout. Say what's wrong. Say when you did this, I felt this way. Because that's what you do. It's the old model. When you did this, I felt this way. This is what I'd like you to do. I have a quick story on that. My husband and I were driving somewhere and he was driving really fast and I said, sweetheart, trying to practice what I preach, you know, when you drive really fast, I don't think you care about my safety. Now I'm, I'm thinking, oh, that was so godly. He said, take a nap. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> take a nap. Take I'm thinking, great. okay, that didn't work. <laughs> but, you, but you can't abdicate. And here's the thing when people ask me, does that work? It, it works because Jesus has commanded us. So I've done my part. I'm not responsible for the other person's re response to my, what I said. But I am responsible to obey God. And when my brother offends me, I'm to tell him his fault. And I have to do it in a God-honoring way. So we have the, then we, so, so we have the collaborator. The collaborator says, I care about you and I care about me. I'm not just going to give in for peace sake. I'm not going to go along. I'm not going to run away and not say. But I want us to work together so we can come to a decision. Just like the daughters of Zelophe had uh, in the story in Numbers 27 when Moses had determined that he was going to, you know, they had a plan for divvying up the land. And, and these women had no husbands, no father, nothing. And they came to Moses and they said, hey, wait a minute. We want an inheritance in the land. Remember that story? Of course. Oh, I love these it. These five women. Five and women. all their names end in A.H. Yes. <laughs> no blah. Okay, exactly. Hogla and all of that. And and so, but this is what God said. They went to they went to uh, Moses and says, "Give us an inheritance. This is what we want. This we don't think this is fair because we don't have anybody associated with us so that we can have some land." And Moses went to God, and God says, "The daughters of Zelophehad speak right." You see, suppose they had not said anything. Suppose they had just pouted. That's not fair. It's not fair. They didn't do that. They didn't. They didn't get buried in resentment. They asked for what they wanted. And they got double portion because they, they got all it. got married and got that inheritance too. Absolutely. Absolutely. They came out smelling <laughs> like a rose. Just because they confronted the issue. They because they, they confronted confront. the issue. See, that's why you need this book. You need to come out smelling like a rose, <laughs> like the daughters of Zelophehad. I've always appreciated them, but I appreciate this because there are times when I just want to blast people out of the saddle. <laughs> I just think, I am so tired of you. And so this is very helpful to me. I know it will be to you. So be sure you call in, get four or five copies. You know a lot of people who need this. Actually, everybody needs it. And of course, call in for prayer. We don't counsel, but we'd love to pray for you. Yeah, and talking on these different styles, it really helps to identify, hey, that's kind of my default. You know? yes, yes. I might be the abdicator, kind of pout and get morose and withdraw and, and all that stuff. And have people try to draw you out and say, what's wrong with you? And I always tell people, don't, right. don't cater to an abdicator because you teach people by what you tolerate. So if, you, if you're always trying to figure out what's wrong with them because they're pouting, you've taught them that that's how to get your attention. Right. 
So we don't want to do that. But again, as you said earlier, we're, we're always in conflict because we're not carbon copies of each other. And, and this is what I understand too. A lot of times when people offend us, they don't know that they've offended us. So that's why it's important for us to tell them. Because if we don't tell them, they may do it again. And they probably will do it again because they didn't know. Even something as simply as pronouncing your name wrong. You know, my, I, my name's kind of hard, Piggy. Sure, <laughs> Some sure. people say Piggy. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's not it. You know, but it, just something simply is just correcting them like that, you know, and it's enough not to cause resentment. You know, I could have, I, I have a quick story on that. I was at his company and the guy brought in some chocolates and he said, do you like chocolate? And I said, yes, I do. And so I, I took one and the next day he came back and he says, hello, chocolate. Oh, I'm thinking, okay, now you're talking about my complexion. Oh. <laughs> and so oh. I said, I'm gonna need you to call me Deborah. Just like that, I'm gonna need you to call me Deborah. He didn't speak to me the next day. What? But he didn't call me chocolate. <laughs> Oh, dear. And he was offended? Oh he was goodness. offended. He was offended. You're kidding. But No, but see, you, and here's the thing. You never know people's sensitivities. No, you So don't. I say treat everybody as if they're emotionally damaged. That way, when you worry about <laughs> offending somebody, just pretend everybody's emotionally damaged. Wow. Because <laughs> we all are in various yeah, in some ways. ways. You just don't little... know what nerve you're going to hit. There you go. You don't know. <laughs> Oh my goodness, get the book, get about 50 of them, because, whoo, boy howdy, we could pass these around and probably turn into people's favorite person just by giving, giving these away. But you know, the other thing I think is super important, and you've talked a little bit, we're not giving away the whole book sure. in here, because you've talked about some of the uh, styles, we're not going to do all of them, but one of the things I think is such an essential ingredient with confronting is this whole idea of forgiveness. Oh yeah, you have to forgive. You have to release the right to avenge the wrong. That sounds like a mouthful, but forgiveness is about letting go, releasing your right to be paid back. Again, I refer to um, my, one of my favorite passages in Genesis 50 and 19, where, where, where Joseph says, when his brother says, we know you're gonna pay us back because we sold you into slavery, we did you really bad, and he says, fear not for am I in the place of God? We don't need to take God's place. Mm. We just need to learn from the incident and, and go forward. Thanking him that, God, you chose me, you allowed me to go through this. I'm gonna get the good out of this. That's what I'm gonna do. You know, Sarah, uh, I think there's timing in talking to people too. Yes. And that we don't just dismiss ourselves. Uh, I know this girl, she always, she's young and pretty, but she comes on a guy so heavy like, Ooh. I want to get married, I want a family, that's the goal in life. Well, I think, well, I don't know that I'm the one. And so I wanted to talk to her about it, but mm. I thought, hmm, she might just cut me off at the pass. But the other day she said something about, you know, I came on to this guy and told him that. Now he's really backed off. I said, well, I have found with men through the years, they want to be the aggressive one. Yes. So I got to say it without blasting her teeth out. That's great. When you come from your own experience, and that's a great way to go because it's, it's, the, it's the sandwich approach. You have some bread, you have some meat, and you have some bread, some affirmation, something positive that you say before you say that. And I say, it's been my experience. I'm, I'm always teaching ladies to stop showing all their parts. Yeah, why? Yeah. <laughs> and I just say, you know, as the guys I've talked to, you know, they just kind of like, they don't want to see it all at once. You know, they'd like to <laughs> say back some of that. They really would. <laughs> Oh my goodness, right. How to confront you know? without offending. It's just, it, I said, it makes, you, you, you give away too much power when you show all of that. You know, you, you're saying, this is what I want to attract you with, but that really isn't, because you know, that's going to fade away at some point. Let's, let's show another asset that we have, that we're understanding and all of that. Oh just my sweet, goodness. dear thing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank yes, you. yes. Make sure you hop on the phone, get on the website, confronting without offending. You and I, we both have, have had lots of confrontations that have really gone down the toilet. I mean, you're like, well, I don't ever want to do that again. But there's a godly way to confront that has some really, really great outcomes. Grab the book. It'll be a tremendous benefit for you. Have you ever needed to confront someone or a situation and didn't know how? Are you lacking the tools to properly deal with difficult situations in your life? The Bible clearly states that we should confront others when we have conflict or misunderstandings. Life is too short to live in offense. For your gift of $29, we'll send you Deborah P. Gay's book, Confronting Without Offending. This life-changing book offers you practical steps to mend broken relationships and will help you grow on a personal level. You will be challenged and become a better you as you discover the proper words to use when confronting others and when and how to confront, how personality types play into confrontation, how to restore harmony into 
every relationship at home and at work. We'll also send you Marilyn and Sarah's Speak the Word booklet and Joy in Relationship scripture card. These powerful resources will help you on your journey to releasing offenses and forgiving others. You will live a more fulfilling life and no longer be bound by negative emotions. Take advantage of these life-changing resources. Call or click today. It is so important for us to forgive. Easy to say, but kind of tricky to do it. And if you're like me, from time to time, I struggle with this area. I've even heard stories of people saying, you know, there's 60 years, 60 years of unforgiveness with a person. And you just are like, wow, how <laughs> that's really difficult. And I believe this with all my heart. I believe that forgiveness is an active decision. You make it, but then you have to manage it as well. So it's a continuing active decision, but it's such a significant thing for us. And Jesus, man, he puts this as one of those core priorities. In Matthew 6, this is Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, 14 and 15, Jesus says, if you don't forgive others, your father won't forgive you. This is like, <laughs> this is a really big deal. I know you and I, we both need God to forgive us. I mean, I need God to forgive me for lots of things. I mean, I mess up. Frequently, you know, say the wrong thing, think the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, just be stupid. I need God to consistently for be forgiving me? Absolutely. But I need to be forgiving others as well. So it's not enough for me just to tell you, forgive, because I honestly think you and I, we both want to forgive, but sometimes it's hard. So why don't you get on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that God would help you to forgive. And even if it's one decision at a time, I forgive, I forgive for this decision. I forgive for this decision. I know I'm going to see that person and I know it brings up hurt in my heart. So I'm going to think ahead of time and work myself and coach myself so that I can be forgiving, that I pass on the forgiveness that I receive. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We know that God forgives us, but also wants to work forgiveness through us and help us to be good at forgiveness. Being a proficient forgiver requires practice. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We're so thrilled that we get to minister to you on YouTube. So of course, you got to hit the subscribe button because we want to continue to get to connect and at your convenience. That's one of the things I love about YouTube is you can watch at your own convenience. And when you subscribe, then you get all the latest and the greatest.